in ISIL, Al-Qaeda, and Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and most recently Al-Shabaab, are calling on their supporters to conduct lone wolf attacks against the United States and other Western countries. Of the 13 attacks in the West since last May, 12 were conducted by individual extremists. Let's get to it. He's a former undercover counterterrorism agent for the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, instrumental in helping bring the Toronto 18 case to trial, and he once traveled to Syria with the point of becoming a jihadi warrior. Let's welcome Mubin Sheikh to Midpoint. And also joining us, former investigative reporter for the Washington Post, multiple author, including the recent The First Family Detail, Ronald Kessler joins us. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Mubin, I'm going to begin with you. Are we here in the West, in America, are we continuing to kid ourselves, and I imagine some people may even be laughing at us, when we continue to think that many of these terrorists are poor, that they do not have money, that mostly all of them come from either broken families or simply bad atmospheres, when we see that Jihadi John was actually someone who was a very well-educated individual? It, it, it uh, shows us that our caricatures of what a violent extremist might look like is wrong. Uh, we engage in these simplistic understanding um, where one thing is supposed to explain everything, and that is almost never the case when you're dealing with a human being. What is the reality then from your experience when you went into Syria, when you were involved in perhaps becoming radicalized, did you find that most of the people were poor or were middle class? Most of them were not poor. Most of them were middle class. They had a relatively good education. Uh, they lived relatively well off. Uh, some of the individuals that I was undercover with, they lived in the suburbs, uh, three-story bungalow homes. Um, they were getting education, student loans. Uh, they had all the opportunities available for them, but um, mainly because of ideology. I mean, when you take on a separationist ideology where... Uh, you are supposed to oppose whatever the non-Muslims do. You create for yourself a position where you don't belong to the society. And that's exactly what you find, is these individuals decide that they don't want to be a part of this system. Ron, what does it say to you when it comes down to governmental leadership, I guess? Because as Mubin says, we have to be naive at this point. We continue to look for these simplistic answers. We're supposed to be, at least the United States, one of the best at gathering intel. We're supposed to be the best at military. We're supposed to be the best at finding bad guys. And here we are, we're floundering around just like, a, like we're amateurs more than anything else many times. You know, it's, it's really very simple. These people are serial killers. They're Nazis. And to try to understand their motives is nuts. Let me just read you what Winston Churchill said when going after the Nazis, when he spoke to the House of Commons. He said, you ask, what is our policy? I can say it is to wage war by sea, land, and air, with all our might, with all the strength that God can give us, to wage war against a monstrous tyranny never, never surpassed in the dark, lamentable catalog of human crime. Now, can you imagine if he followed that by saying, as Obama has, well, we have to find out why they're doing this and why do they hate the Jews and why are they uh, putting people in gas chambers and what, what is their uh, sociological background and maybe we can help them, maybe we can get them a job. This is nuts. This is what we're being faced with. We're being faced with a president who uh, is in denial about danger and in de denial about but risk. But Ron, wait a minute. How can anybody be in such denial? Because quite frankly, the evidence is out there. We see it every day. There are more beheadings. There are more Christians being slaughtered. There are more people being left on the streets to die. How can anybody be so void? How can anybody be miss the, miss the signs so bad? And frankly, stupid. I know he, he is very smart, uh, very articulate, but when it comes to... to to uh, this uh, very common sense issue, he, he, he really is, is lacking uh, any, any concept of what's going on. Um, the, um, you know, I, I think of uh, Democratic Governor uh, Corzine going 90 miles an hour uh, and without a seatbelt and almost lost his life. Why does someone do that? Uh, it's the same as Obama, it's, it's, it's denial. It's uh, lack of responsibility. It's risk taking. Uh, Obama is a total political animal. He wants to defend his record. He wants to defend the fact that he withdrew from Iraq and, and therefore 
uh, uh, allowed ISIS to to uh, to flourish. Okay, hang on a sec, Ron, so because we're right up against the clock. I got to take a break and come back for both of you. Please stand by. The terrorist train running full speed. If we're not facing them head on, how do we dig into their cells and turn around those we often see as completely out of touch with reality, maybe crazy at best? Welcome back to Midpoint. Former undercover counterterrorism agent for the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, Mubin Sheikh, and former investigative reporter for the Washington Post, multiple author, including the recent The First Family Detail, Ronald Kessler. Mubin, let me start with you again on this because we heard in the last couple of weeks from the president's representative that one of the ways to solve this was to make sure that people get jobs. I'm sorry, but I have to basically tell you from my perspective and others that I spoke with in the intelligence community, they may not have laughed so hard and so long when they heard that said out loud. What was your response? Well, if, again, the problem is uh, very simplistic, superficial explanations. Uh, for what you know, for why people would want to do things like what they're doing, um, I think what they mean by lack of jobs is the reality is is that ISIS pays people uh, to fight for them. Um, it's the richest terrorist organization in the history of humankind. Um, they they can give nine hundred bucks a month to people, and especially in places like Iraq where the economy is not the greatest. Um, there is a there is a a place for these individuals to, um, you know, to to get a job, basically fighting for this group. So, so is this I all mean, about the money, though? Let me ask you this: Is this all about the money? And are we kidding ourselves every time we move around to this ideological idea? No, it's never only one thing, and it's definitely not about the money alone. Um, I, I am definitely in the camp of those who believe that ideology is a is a major driver in all of this. Even when you look at other factors, uh, as other experts will, will, will try to explain and say, well, this is about identity, this is about a sense of belonging, a sense of meaning, and that is all true. But those three things are themselves constructs of ideology. Uh, so I, I fail to see how they're really fundamentally different from ideology as uh, uh, an explanation. All right, stand by just a sec. Ron, let me get it to you first for an opinion then. In your opinion, the people that you know, things that you've talked to, things that you've read, how then do we start to undermine these people? How do we start to get to them? Because there has you to know, be a way to do it. We're not that, we're not that stupid. It, it's simple. You know, when you go after serial killers, you either arrest them or you kill them. It's the same with these people. You have to kill them. And, you know, we have a, a defense budget of half a trillion dollars a year. What are we doing with that if we don't use all of our resources, including ground troops, to wipe these people out? What's missing from the debate often is the fact that they are trying to develop weapons of mass destruction. They could wipe out millions of Americans with biological or chemical weapons. Uh, and all it takes is one... Uh, one lucky strike to do that. What about here at home, though, Ron? Because, I mean, we've talked about the on the ground over there, but what about here in the United States? Because there are some people now who are believing that the next beheading is going to happen here on American soil. Well, thank God the FBI has become very effective at going after these people. You see the arrests every few months. You saw the arrest in the past few days of, of these Brooklyn uh, 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 radical Islamists. Um, and uh, but you know eventually they're going to miss someone. They're going to they're going to uh, they can't get everybody. Mubin, uh, it's, so, it, no, so Mubin, the, I was going to ask Mubin, It's obvious that in New York they actually got to the terrorists first, or these guys who want to be terrorists. Is it just perhaps that our intelligence services, at least here in America, are doing a better job than we think, or are they really still years behind in your in your estimation? No, the, the intelligence community and the FBI are doing a fantastic job, and they don't get enough credit. You know, we, we celebrate the military on, on various holidays. We don't celebrate the FBI uh, and the CIA, which really have kept us safe since 9-11 from a foreign terrorist attack. Uh, you know, behind the scenes in my book, The Secrets of the FBI, uh, of the FBI I go into the changes that uh, Bob Mueller, the director, put in place to make the FBI more prevention-oriented. Uh, but still, when you consider that uh, Comey, the current director, recently said that he has investigations going into ISIL in every state. Just imagine what that means and just how, how easy it could be to, uh, to screw up on one of those cases and allow 
one of these individuals to wipe out millions of Americans. Let me point this out to you, and let me get to Ron, if we will. Ron, I've got about 60 seconds left. Do we then maybe need to stop putting a little too much money into the overseas, put more money into our FBI, into the people right here, and let them really get to work? Wouldn't that be smarter? Well, that would, that would be a good idea, although the FBI is very well funded, unlike the Secret Service, by the way. And that's an example of, of uh, Obama's poor judgment. He recently appointed uh, an insider to uh, be the new director against all advice, including in my book, The First Family Detail. Here's this guy whose own life is at risk and the life of his own family, and yet he uh, is so blind, is, is in such denial that he uh, uh, ignores all advice. Then let me ask you this. I mean, in one it's second, not, please. I've only got about 20 seconds left. Mubin, let me ask you then. Is it, would it be smarter for us to spend our money then on the FBI's side instead of worrying about overseas? Uh, I think um, I think it would be a better idea, especially if you're worried about or concerned about the protection of the homeland. Um, part of the problem is a lot of the overseas excursions are causing some of the problems on the domestic side. So uh, protect the home front first. There you deal. go. Ronald Kessler, Mubin Sheikh, fascinating, but we are out of time. Please, gentlemen, we're going to come back and do this again. Thank you very much for your time. Stay with us because Midpoint continues.